they didn't give a damn about these women life. They didn't care because they said these women use drugs. So they body. Had these been women with a totally different background, they would have pursued this man. He wouldn't have kept getting out like that. Now there's a strong chance you've never even heard of Samuel Little before. He lived in the shadows and flew under the radar for a long time. How many states, different states, you think? Florida, Georgia, come all the way up. East Coast, come down Mississippi, then go across, come back up, <laughs> until you get to California. So Samuel Little is the most prolific serial killer in US history. His victims were primarily sex workers, drug users, alcoholics, people of color, killed women in 19 states across the US from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. He just chose people that society didn't really care about. Once he killed someone, he would leave town within a day or two, and he just kept skipping town, kept moving from a different state to a different state to a different state. And most of the time, the police would just think, you know, it's not really worth our time, so we'll just forget about it. And he managed to keep doing that for 40 years. If he was locked up earlier on, uh, a lot of this, it, I, this podcast would not have happened. It's only until the early 2010s that he was finally put away for good. This isn't like ancient history. This is recent. I didn't know about this. I had no idea that Samuel Little existed until until you came into my life, basically. I work for an organization that works with human trafficking survivors, as well as uh, sexually exploited peoples. This, this podcast is, is very, very personal for me. I understand the fear and the feeling when someone snatches you off the street and puts you into a trunk. I know what it feels like to be beaten until you're unconscious and waking up in a strange place. Those women are human. That's my mom. How old is she there? She had to be in her 20s, I think. Glory Bonner, her mother was killed by Samuel Little. With my mother, from my understanding, she put up a fight, but she died instantly. By her dying fast like that, he couldn't continue what he wanted to do his sexual preference, basically. Glory went for years without any answers. She had no clue what happened to her mother. And then years later, after Samuel Little confessed, the police officer called her and said to her, you know, this is the man responsible for killing your mother. Why do you think it took them so long to actually convict him of these things? They didn't care. Because of the type of women these was, they didn't, they didn't care because most of them was drug users. They, most of them sold their body and they just, they didn't care point blank. It turned out that a lot of these murder cases, the police were marking them as, as NHI, which means no humans involved. An alleged police categorization of murder victims that suggested they weren't quite human. Effectively deprioritizing the case. Like law enforcement actually used this as a way to prioritize um, victimization. Being a black woman in LA, I can see how that can be. We just see this being as further down on the priority list when it comes down to helping them in any way. If this, if it would have been a woman that family was well off, totally different background, they would have pursued that. It just shows, you know, a, a real inability or lack of willingness on behalf of authorities to do anything about what turned out to be the worst murderer in US history. And I, and I start to wonder what other agencies, what other systems have the same ideal that we do not see this person as human, or we do not see this person as being worthy so we really have a, you know, very in-depth story to every single part of this. Women who survived Samuel Little. 
victims' families, lawyers who frankly messed up when they had their chance to convict him, and the police officer and the attorney who eventually brought him down for good. And it, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's difficult to hear at times. It's not, it's not a nice story, but it's, I think it's important. Once people hear the stories, once people hear um, the things that the, the guests spoke about and the questions that are asked and the answers, that are answered, I, I think that there will be more conversations in this community and uh, there's going to be more precautions uh, made to keep everyone safe. And I suppose my biggest hope is that in telling their story, the story of those 93 women, we're helping to push things in the right direction.